try to drop. What kind of oil? It's called uh, it's called CBD oil or some shit like that. Oh, CBD oil. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. For, you, uh, you like hemp? It's like a hemp oil, isn't it? I I think so. Are are you familiar with that? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's tomorrow, and that is it for us today. And we will leave you with a. I can't do it. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll do it live. Fuck it. Do it live. I can. I'll write it, and we'll do it live. And thing sucks. All you have to do is stay a minute, just take your time, the clock is ticking, so stay, all you have to do is Yes, sir. Uh, we are doing it live. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I am back again. I am welcoming back the LOM community. I am working. <laughs> I am working today. I am working today, man. The LOM community can't get enough of me today. I just I did a did an interview earlier. Bluebird, what's going on? I did an interview earlier today. Then I did a regular podcast about CBD oil. And now I'm back with another interview. Well, I am Lockout Men. Welcome to the Lockout Men podcast show where the train just don't stop. The Truckers podcast. Yes, sir. That is me. If you like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that all button for more. Yo, if you want to support your boy because I am working for you today, hook me up with some coffee, man. That's lockout me and dollar sign in front of it. Or just go to the uh, coffee app and hook your boy up with some coffee. Well, in today's episode, in today's episode, I found this gentleman on YouTube, of course, one of my subscribers. The, the, the subscribers, the subscribers that you guys are, y'all y'all want y'all want the train to keep running, so y'all gotta keep giving me people to talk to. This young man comes by way of YouTube, and I looked at his channel, and as he said in the green room, it's a hodgepodge of of content on there. But this man is a trucker to his heart because there's nothing but dump trucks, semi trucks trucks construction trucks you name trucks you name it it's on his channel and i like to uh i would like to welcome him to the show so everybody put your hands together for the boston trucker hey how we doing we are doing great we are doing great how are great. you how are you today I'm doing wonderful. We're just going down the road outside of Boston here. All right, so Boston trucker man, you, you so yeah. so many so many drivers out here comes when they come into the game, when they come into the game or the YouTube game, they try to come up with names, catchy names. Where did Boston trucker come from? Now, now, don't slap me. I I already know, but I'm just. <laughs> I already got an idea, Boston trucker. But let let the people let All the right. people know. Think you think you know? You think you know? Ah, there you yeah. go. Well, you you know, I've had a few CB handles over my trucking career, which is over thirty years now. And uh, I've been the Massachusetts cowboy. I've been the Road Ranger. I was Mister Nice Guy. Uh, then I drove for Walmart and they kind of pissed me off. And so I was like, no more Mr. Nice Guy for a while. And then when I get off, I drove over the road for 20 years. But when I got off the road and I started doing this YouTube thing, I just needed something simple. I was working for a company called Boston Bark. And somebody's like, ah, if you're going to do YouTube. You should call yourself like the Boston Bark Trucker. Mm. And I was like, oh, what about the Boston Trucker? And I'm like, there we go. And that's, it. that's 11 years now. I'm the Boston Trucker on social media and on the CB radio. You know what? Now, when I came, now I when I got in the truck, and I I never came with a with a with a handle. I I, I never did. I I never, mm -hmm. you know. At first, I was going. At first, you know, I, when I 
when I put on my YouTube, I was lockout men to trucker or trucker lockout men and all like that. And I was like, you know what? I really don't want to put trucker on my on my YouTube. I had my YouTube way before I came into trucking. And the bat story okay. of the bat story of my name comes from my son. You know what I'm saying? And it came from when I used to do uh uh, car uh, automobile lockouts. So instead of you know, oh. my, my son was like, "Yo, why why don't we just call you the lockout man?" And I was like, "You know what? The companies that I that I that that I got contract with thinks that I have a you know that I got a gang of cars." And I was like, "Maybe lockout men? How's that?" And that's and that's where lockout men yeah. came from. So when I got into the truck. I was like, well, I, at first my channel was like G style, but then I was like, everybody from the trucking world knows me as lockout men, and we just go from there, man. Uh, 30, 30. That's a great name, and it's actually it's personal. Yeah, thank, God. thank you. 30 years, sir. 30 years of trucking, man. What's, yeah, man. What's your experience through 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 30 years of trucking man what what have you seen what have you done what have you saw so i've done done a lot of stuff i mean i grew up in the industry uh i'm 50 years old now i'm a 51 i grew up you know riding with my dad and trucks and cab overs and uh you know coast to coast when i was a kid and uh what i always wanted to do since the uh, first time i ever rode in the truck so I started learning how to drive. Like when I was 14, 15 years old, I was, I mean, running across Montana, driving my dad's Western star and he'd sleep in the bunk and, uh, he'd just say, keep it straight. And so to me, it was just natural to get into it. Even though my dad, even though he taught me how to drive, he always told me over my dead body, you're going to drive a truck. I didn't work this hard for you to drive a truck too. Meanwhile, teach me how to drive a truck. So it was kind of like dangling a cookie in front of me, you know? So how how old so, was you? How old was uh, you at the time? And and the type of truck? Now I'm assuming the type of truck that you was driving back in the day ain't like the ain't like the the modern trucks of today, right? No, they were like cab over Kenworth, and uh, I drove a truck called the White Road Bot when I was 15. It had a you know no power steering, no air ride seat, no AC, no stereo. Um, no heated mirrors, no serious satellite radio, no GPS, and no whining because they didn't know any better. Damn. You know, and uh, you know what? That's what that's what the guys did back then. And when I started driving, I got my I got my official license week of my 18th birthday in December '88, and uh, I was off to the races. And then I was and I was driving over the road. I'm about to hit a dead spot. If I lose you, say something, Mom. But I'll, it could collapse about three seconds there. No problem. But I started driving over the road. Okay, but I stopped before. Yep, there it the is. Coach for <laughs> a company that didn't you know, you hit, you hit that dead spot. Yeah, yep. I, I go through this cornfield every time I lose it. I should be back now. All right, you good. Um, you good. Go ahead. But yeah, when I was 18, okay. When I was 18, I got a job. Uh, I had a job driving for an over-the-road company. I was working local, and one night, a guy says, uh, "My boss says a guy called in sick. Can you uh, can you run down run down to Jersey and out to Indiana and back?" I said, "Hell yeah!" I had a cab over international, uh, nineteen eight nineteen eighty nine now, and uh, I was off to the race and I drove over the road coast to coast for twenty years and I loved it, man. Loved every minute of it. All right, so you you so got I never you, thought I would get off the road. You you got into it when you was fresh, eighteen. Did you? Now you you yeah. you learned everything from your dad, like literally from from your young years all the way up until you actually got into you know got into the truck yourself. How did you ever Correct. go so to? There was, there was you, no learning curve, you know. Did you ever go to school, or you know you you say you just went and just got your license like like that? But did you ever would like how we got to go to school now? Did you ever go to school then? Right. No. Well, I, here's what I, here's how I got my life. So I'm, I'm 17, 18 years old in high school. My dad saying he don't want me to drive a truck. And I went and got my permit. As soon as I 
was able to, and I knew how to drive forward. I could shift gears. I could downshift for my dad, but I wasn't a, prof- a prolific uh, backer-upper. Mm-hmm. So there was a truck driving uh, school in town, like a small a small place. They had like one tractor trailer and a couple straight trucks. And so after school, I was I was for fifty dollars a lesson. The guy spent two hours with me teaching me what I needed to know to pass the test, which was backing up and pre trip and straight line backing. So I, I did about five lessons with him at 50 bucks a pop. Went down and got my license the week of my 18th birthday and said, hey, Dad, I got my license. I'm a trucker just like you. And uh, that, that's how I got my license. Now, hold that thought for a second. Uh, Bluebird, wanted, Bluebird wants to know sure. the same thing as I want to know is why your dad didn't want you to drive, even though he taught you. Yeah, so my dad, my dad started out calling swing and days and and working hard, and you know back to those days, you know everything was driver unload. There were no pallets. There was no there were no lumpers. There was no. It's just you worked hard. You busted your ass, and you know you made a living. It wasn't nothing you can get rich at. I was really good at um, architectural drawing in high school, and I had an uncle that was an architect, and my dad was. Parent, both parents are pushing me towards that, but I just, I just faked it and pretended that's what I wanted, but I just didn't, you know, and uh, I think my dad's proud of me now, you know, he, he was a driver for 45 years, company driver for 20, and then he was an owner operator for 25 something years, you know, I've been retired for 10 now, okay. but uh, trucking's been good to me. I, I got no complaints. I loved. It. I love every minute of it. Now back, now back then, you was running hard, working hard. You, 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 you got the, you know, you got the, you, you got the trucker gene. But what about the money? Like yep. back then, you know, you, you know, back then, what about the money? Because of course, the money now. Sure. The money now is not all that hot, but what about the money back then, though? Uh, well, I, you know, I always tell people now that ask me, hey, I want to become a truck driver. You know, how much money can I make? And I, I kind of say tongue in cheek, you can't get in it, to, in it for the money. You got to get in it for the adventure of it, for the love of it. If you're in this for the money, it's going to eat you up inside. Now, I make a good living, and I've made a good living, but back then... Back then, I was making 23 cents a mile. When I was 18, 19, 20 years old, I was running 5,600 miles a week. I was running Boston, dropping hook in Evansville, Indiana, dropping hook in Las Vegas, grab an empty, go down to L.A., load a floor load, three days back to Boston. I mean, I do 5,600 miles in six and a half weeks. I mean, six and a half days, sorry. Back then, nonstop, 23 cents a mile. I mean, wasn't a lot of money, but... I was a young kid. I mean, I, that I had was money enough in my pocket. For, right. I that was enough for you at that in. time. Man, 50, yeah, 5,300 yeah, yeah. 50, miles, man. I mean, some we, week. Well, you guys was. Yeah, we, yeah. You guys was doing it by the book. You, you was doing it by the book. No. Right? Well, multiple books. Multiple books. Multiple you books. Know, I, I, was, I wasn't. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't know any better. You know, young and dumb and a lot of energy, you know, back then, you know. I mean, Hey, you know, the, the game was don't get caught. You know, <laughs> how was uh how, how was uh well, well, my dad? My dad used to say, "Whoever plays the game, best wins." And he also he used to also tell me later on, and when we worked for we ended up working for the same company years later, um, there was a little more legitimate. He said, uh, "If you if your log department isn't giving you log violations, you ain't working hard enough." Damn it, man. So. Oh man, so bad bad then that sounds like an enjoy well, you know, back, you know, you old school drivers do make it enjoyable. And, and if it wasn't I wanna thank you. You know, I, I wanna thank you for your service, for the hard work that you put into it, no. you know, because we are in a thankless uh in a thankless position, man. And and a lot of people don't, you know, don't don't recognize us for what we actually bring to the table. So back then, you know, back during during that time back then, back then, it was more of a brotherhood, wasn't it? I mean, what was what was the uh what was the camaraderie like between you and other truckers back then? I mean, it seems like it was a brotherhood back then. I mean, you know, we you run across all you run together all night. You meet meet one of your buddies and you just run and 
stop when you got to stop, and there was no uh, none of these ELDs or anybody telling you what you had to do and when you had to do. Nobody telling you you had to had to take a nap or take a thirty minute break. You just you were given an appointment, and you were told you can't. There's no way, no way, no way you're going to be able to get it done, and you just got it done. And 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 but for what? What's the big payoff? Just to say you did it. I mean, there's nobody patting you on the back on the other end. There's no, there's no bonus. Just did it because you did it. And it wasn't, uh, I mean, that's all. That's, that's the reason I did it. It was just, that was the job. And that's how my dad did it. And that's how, that's how I was doing it you know, for a long, long time. Boston, man, what, what, how many, 30 years, do you know how many miles you accumulated throughout the years? Um, well, so, 20 years over the road, the last 10 years I've worked uh, local hauling uh, gravel and I haul heavy equipment up here. Um, a few million, you know, back then, definitely. I, I know I added up one time. One time I, one time I come up with like 3 million. I'm like, it sounds like a lot of miles, but I, I started averaging. I, I remember I wrote it down. I was like, I'm still doing like 160,000 miles a year average, 20 years. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know trucker math. I had to pull up the calculator for that one, but. You know, 160,000 a year for 20 years. In the last 10 years, I probably do about 50,000 a year. So, what's, so what, whatever that comes to. So help me, help ye old little of math over here. <laughs> how, how, long do, how long would it take today's, in your opinion, how long would it take today's truck driver to accumulate a million miles? How, how long do you think? I mean, how many miles do you guys even allowed to drive now? Is can you only drive like thirty five hundred a week? Give or take with the with the clock. Yeah, that's that's yeah, that's that's like that was four days back then. Yeah, that's, you know what? I don't know. Do you feel like it's safer and safer with these ELDs? And do you like that? I like I said, I I, I try to I, I I wanted to count how many miles I did so far. I I I stopped counting mm -hmm. because you know I'm you know I know these companies like to like to you know showcase their drivers you know their their safe drivers with how many miles they done but me yep. you know I I sure. you know I'm I'm not at one company you know I thought you know when I was coming up sure, sure. when I was coming up and I was looking uh looking and listening to other people and when they were saying yo i got you know a thousand miles or a hundred thousand miles or a million miles i mm -hmm. i thought that was like it follows you from company to company just like your 401k no but it's it's different at yeah. company to company <laughs> so I, I i don't know i i know i put in yeah. a, I, I know i put in over a hundred thousand miles in in my five years of trucking how long have you been driving five years five years yes sir Yes, oh yeah, yes. and you drive over the road, right? Uh no. Oh yeah, you probably no, have five hundred thousand. No, 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 no. no. Oh. I'm, I'm regional. I'm going home every day, bro. I mean, every weekend. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I gave up my, I gave up my OTR, I, I, I gave up my OTR hat, uh, a couple of years ago. Yeah, I, I get, I, I put in my, I put in my experience. That's what I wanted to get. Now that I got it, yeah, I, I want to go home every week, if not every day, but. You know, Dude, I had the I had the best I had the best regional job at one point. Uh, you know, I, I had a regional job for eight years for a company called New Century out of New Jersey. We were paying us fifty seven cents a mile, mm. fifteen bucks a drop, mm. running New Jersey to Maine every day with like ten to twenty deliveries, mm. big fast trucks. Instead of eight years. but in trucking, good jobs don't usually last, and uh, the writing was on the wall, and they were out of business. Wow. A little while later, but but you enjoyed that's, yourself. That's, that's a, that was a six figure job right there. Now speaking, oh, now, I worked for it. I worked for it. Now speaking of uh, now speaking of uh, fast trucks back in the day, uh, you know mm -hmm. back you know back when you know your father was driving and you know when you turned eighteen you started mm -hmm. driving. Was there any such thing as governing trucks back then? Um. I didn't drive my first governed truck till probably 94, 95, so like 60 years into driving. Uh, well, my dad drove definitely not. 
he was never a big fast trucker. Like he always drove. He was always like slow and steady, slow and he always tell me slow and steady. He goes, he goes. You'll see these guys. He used to tell me, I see these guys fly past me. And he goes, then they stop at the truck stop to play to play pinball. And he goes, I go right by him. I drive nice and steady. He goes, I'll stay. And um. And um, yeah, I had a government truck, ninety four. It was a brand new CH Mac, sixty five miles an hour. And I remember my first week with that truck; it had forty seven hundred miles in it, and I, that was, it was exhausting. And like I don't know, I was, I couldn't even. It was it was ridiculous. I I, I talked my way into them turning it back up to like seventy two. Hmm. That's what's up, man. All right, so back. Yeah. So, so what was some of the what was some of the what was some of the con or pros and cons back then versus pros and cons now? Uh, well, I think the, the same goes now as it did then. If you're going to drive over the road uh, and you want to keep a relationship with anybody, it's going to be pretty tough. And, I think I think now, and I don't know if it's because of uh, social media, you see all these, these truck wreck videos mm-hmm. that we didn't have those back then. They weren't common. There weren't truckers crashing into each other, and uh, you know, and 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 these big giant pileups in the fog. And I don't I don't know what's going. On, why why the, is the drivers aren't paying attention anymore? Because back then everybody had a CB radio, and everybody had the CB radio cracked open so you could hear it. And people were talking and paying attention, and more. I feel like they were more, more in the game back then than they are now. And everybody seems to be off in la la land in their own world, out for themselves now, uh, self entitled. And I mean, you know, and, and, either, and either then and now, the money, the money, the time you spent away from home really isn't worth it because you know now you, you work regional you can't put a price on being home and having a life and having mm-hmm. a schedule and uh that's really and i say this all the time uh work-life balance is, is the key to a happy life and a happy trucking career and just work 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 uh in the truck it's it's good for a while but then it, it'll drive you crazy because you got too much you got too much time in you on your hands to be thinking about stuff and overthinking situations. And um, I think I'm off subject now, but you know, I know <laughs> a lot of guys reach out to me on Instagram and you know, they say, hey, I'm thinking about becoming a trucker. I don't know if I should go over the road or should I, or should I go local? And I mean, personally, 20 years over the road was great. There was no learning curve for me. Nowadays, I don't recommend it to anybody. I just see it, it looks miserable you it's a gamble you're out with a trainer who knows how much experience this guy has he may may might not even have driven in the snow yet now he's out training you and Mm -hmm. it just looks so dangerous and the money i don't think the money's worth it to be gone you got to do it for the adventure i tell guys do a single do it for a year they get a local job or regional job you know which that's that's what i say it's a lot easier i don't even know if i answered your question but it's it's a lot easy for these guys to get uh to get local jobs now uh, Bluebird wants to wants to know. She says, um, "What advice would you give to new drivers, and particularly lady drivers?" Uh, you know, I have so much respect for lady truck drivers. I always have. Um, I'm not just blowing smoke as Bluebird's here. Um, I just, you know, women truck drivers. Some of the best truck drivers, I'll give you the advice in a second. Some of the best truck drivers, you know why? Because they have to be. Because unfortunately, men are always watching them, waiting and hoping they're going to screw up. And I don't know why, but it's always been the way. If you see a woman truck driver, everybody's paying attention. Everybody's trying to be charming on the radio. My advice is get a female trainer or somebody you really trust. And, um, getting into it and just just keeping your head down and paying attention and um don't uh, don't let it go to your head because every guy there's so many jerks out here <laughs> and that have bad intentions and just kind of keep to yourself and do your own thing and you'll be fine and uh 
just know everybody's watching you, and uh, that and that I think makes them better because they just they don't want. I don't think you know they don't want to be seen as a failure in front of their peers. And I don't know if that makes any sense, but I have a lot of women truck drivers who are really good friends of mine. Um, a lot of them on social media. I don't know. I don't know if you follow just in the lady trucking. Mm-hmm. You all should be following her if you're not. Um, powerful women to give good messages out there. Um, out there doing it, them, doing it all by themselves. And uh, yeah. All right. Women all truck right. drivers rule. And back back in the day, back one one more thing. Well, back in the day, women truck drivers didn't even have their own showers back then. They had to. It was it was really tough for the for the ladies who started out. You know. A lot different now where they can, you know, they got yeah, to get the, their own private showers. So how, so yeah. back, so back well, then, sure. you know, back then fueling, uh, fueling truck stops and stuff like that, uh, food, <laughs> good food at that as, uh, oh, yeah. back in the day, what, what was, uh, what was, what was the experience like, you know, just being in that type of atmosphere when you go to fuel, was there respect for the fuel islands and stuff like that? What, what was it like? Uh, well, certainly back then, people weren't washing their trucks with the squeegee. You know, they were used for windows only. Mm-hmm. Um, that fueling, fueling was good. You know, you didn't see drivers, you know, taking a 34 on the fuel island like they like to tend to do now. And uh, you fueled up, you, you, you pulled the head, everybody pulled the head. Well, you parked. You didn't. Uh, there was no self entitlement with fueling and and food. And the I mean, the food was great back in the back then. I mean, I, I, I hate to say it, but uh, my dad, my dad was like a bodybuilder when he got when he got into over the road trucking. And when he retired from trucking in '09, I mean, the guy could barely walk. He was so heavy from eating mm-hmm. and the bad lifestyle and sitting on your ass all day. And and then when I went over, when I drove over the road, I was I would. I, I remember I got a lot of Pizza Hut Express and a lot of Subway. And I put them in my cool. I always had a cooler. There were no refrigerators in trucks. They had a igloo cooler on my passenger seat, mm-hmm. strapped down with a bungee cord. And I'd fill it up, and uh, just in case, just in case I, need, I was needed get needed to get some food. But I'd eat eat when I'm driving, get to the buffet at night. I was, you know, I was two fifty when I get off the road. I'm I'm one ninety now. That's that's that was sixty pounds of trucker fat just from driving over the road back in the day, you know. It's, you know, no exercise, and you know, I sort of think about nowadays. Like, I kind of wish I was over the road because I think I would take advantage of it better. I would Uber, I would take an Uber and go somewhere, and uh, get out and go for a walk. You know, you know the benefits of exercise now much much better than we did back then. And I think it'd be a little more fun to explore and eat better and go to a real restaurant. You know, because uh, the truck stop menus are not known for the health. That's what's up, man. So, uh, I know it's great for you to yeah. pursue your trucking, your your trucking journey because you you've been in it, you've been in it since you was a baby. You know, your adolescence and now your teens and now you and you you in it in your in your in your trilight. Uh, you know, we we know that it hasn't always been easy. You know what I'm saying? That it, it, if we come out and say yep. that this this industry was easy, we we will be lying for for real. Overall, what would you what, sure. what would you say trucking has been has has trucking been easy for you overall? I uh, I say I say yes yes it's been easy. I mean my early career, you know, it's physically hard and physically exhausting because. You know, we unloaded the trucks and loaded the trucks. You know, you would every box would pass through your hand, and then you would drive, and you would drive, you know, ridiculous schedules overnight. And yeah, it was it was tough. It wasn't as tough as back in the sixties and seventies, but when I was driving in the early early nineties, it was tough and it was physically exhausting. But I also didn't really know any different either. That you know now. Now I work smarter, not harder, where I'm just driving. And once in a while, I chain down some equipment. But, um, you know, it def- definitely was, was uh, harder then. And, hmm. uh, yeah. 
<laughs> you know, drivers. Now, you know, let's let's talk about respect uh, for a little bit, man, because you know we we don't get none. Uh, you know, we we try to get it doing this COVID thing. We thought we had it, but now it's going back to shit. You know, none of the, you know, we don't get none yeah. from, we don't get none from the interstates, none from the streets, none from the shippers, receivers. Hell, we don't even get none from our own truckers, you know, trucker buddies. Why do you think that is? Right. Look at that again. Was, said, it, was the end of that? I said, why do you think that is? Why do you oh, why do you think that we don't get I no think respect? We br- I out think here? we bring it up. I think well, I think I think number one, the public's ignorant of what we do. They're kind of we're kind of invisible to them. And number two, a lot of it, a lot of the truck drivers bring it on them, bring it on them themselves with their the way. N- number one, the way they drive. Number two, their appearance. And I'm not saying. Uh, You know, back, you know, I, don't, I keep saying I don't say I'm back in the old days. I mean, I'm not that I'm not that old, <laughs> but I think the truck drivers drove, drove more professionally and dressed more professionally. And but then on the other hand, I look at the truck drivers now. A lot of them are college graduates. I don't hear cursing like I used to hear on the CB radio. I used to, I used to always cringe. I hear every other word was the F word on the CB radio. Now it seems like there is a better class of truck drivers now, but then there's also much more of a low class. And, you know, I understand being comfortable when you're driving. Mm-hmm. I mean, I used to sometimes drive without my shoes on, but the, the flip flop and the sweatpants culture and the, the blue parrot over the head, you know, like you're uh, expecting to call it in second culture is really just doesn't, doesn't look good in my personal opinion it, it doesn't look good and it doesn't make us get any respect for anybody who's outside of the industry now you know what now and, and driving driving goes when i when yeah. i when i when i started i when i started yeah i i i brought the blue parrot kept it on my head and then mm-hmm. one day i just looked in the mirror and i was like really like <sighs> So I I, yeah. I I don't wear I don't I don't wear the Bluetooth no more. You know I got my phone. I keep it to my ear. Yep. If somebody if somebody calls me, I'll 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 tell them to hold up and I'll pull over or pull mm-hmm. over at a rest stop and then I'll go on the phone. But yeah, too many too many over the over the ear drivers. You know what I'm saying? Especially for the females. It's, yeah, it is crazy. It and, is and, crazy. and you can pick them out. Like I could be in a mall. I think I could be in a mall and see a guy wearing a blue parrot or. Giant headset. I'll see my wife. That guy's a truck driver. Mm-hmm. How do you know? It just, it just no. He just looks, you know. You it say, just looks. It just looks. I don't know. It looks, you looks say, like I, I have a, I have a Plantronics uh, little earpiece right now, and mm-hmm. I get out of the truck and I'm on a call. I'll keep it on, but I, you'll never see me out of the truck not on a call with a thing in my ear. I know or sweatpants right. or flip flops, and <laughs> you know what I mean. I got you. I got you. What do you have? Not- some fun. Have some. Have some pride in yourself. Oh, have some pride in yourself, truck drivers. There you go. You know, go. people are watching, and you're representing. You're not only representing yourself; you're representing your industry and your company. And uh, you know, we got to get to get that respect back. Well, now, let me ask you this: Now, being that we being that we don't get no no respect, and you answer, you know, you answer the way you answer. Mm-hmm. Do you think that? Do you think not having the respect turn truckers to be rude? You know, I, I think a lot of it comes from home. I mean, yeah, you know, the, the isolation and you don't talk to a lot of people. Like, you, all of a sudden, you forget how to talk like a, pers- like a normal person. And, uh, and the disrespect from the shippers and receivers and the, the general public. Yeah, it could can, it can definitely um, pardon you to change your attitude. Um, and I remember when, when I, when I, after my first few years on the road and I come home and see my mother and she comments on the way I'm talking, although she goes, why do you have a Southern accent? You're from Boston. And why do you, I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I just, it just, it gets ingrained in you, this whole road life, you know, it's like a this whole other culture 
that nobody knows anything about her that it even exists if you're not in the industry. You know, it's like this whole. It's, it, and it's you know, what else is what else is cool is that we have this whole trucker culture on social media now, mm-hmm. and I always wonder: are there is there a plumbing culture? Is there an electrician culture on social media that we don't know? Because I only know about trucking culture, mm-hmm. but it's like we're all together on this, and and guys like you who are out there in the public, you know, you got a you got a great chance of uh, helping change and shape people and the new people coming in the industry. Know, uh, paving the way for them and showing them the right way of doing I appreciate things. it. I it's really appreciate cool. that. Thank you. Thank you. Wolf uh now now uh Boston man with with drivers facing danger every day, you know, I mean you don't know what the day will bring. How do you how do you start your day and what are your safe practices? Sure. Um I start my day every morning with a preacher. Pop the hood first thing. Check the oil. Check the antifreeze. I look for I look for crack belts. I kick the tires. I check my lights. Um, you know, I'm, I know my truck really well, so I you know I pretty much know if something's loose. But I hey, clean mirrors, clean windows every day. If it rains, get out and clean them. I can't stand seeing anybody driving with dirty mirrors after it rained and the. The rain drives in the dirt. I have no excuse for dirty windows. You got to be able to see. And my driving, I run 100,000 pounds all day long, every load, safe following distance. Don't get in a hurry. Don't let anybody push you around and tell you how to drive your truck. And you just, just hold back. If you drive, like my dad did, I learned it from my dad. Slow and steady, hang back. Don't try and keep up with traffic. Don't try and keep up with the next truck. Don't be afraid to let the guy, the trucker who's passing you, who's running neck and neck with you. Don't, don't be afraid to back out of it. Let him in front of you. Big deal. You know, just, just no hurry to get anywhere. I don't even, I don't drive fast. I drive the speed limit 65. I'm, I'm running between 65 and 70 tops. It's just, it's just safety is everything in trucking. I've been driving, like I said, 31 years. Mm-hmm. No tickets, no accidents. Just slow and steady, and you get there. Take one mile at a time. Don't, that's don't some, look ahead. That's some you know, good advice. To, that's it. One mile at a time. That is some. You know? That is some damn good yeah. advice. Well, you've been over the road for so long, man. I mean, thirty years is 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 a blessing, and hopefully, you could put in thirty more. But um, what are some of the basics that every truck driver should have on the road? Sure. Uh, well, definitely extra clothing. Like I, I work local now. So I'm home every night. I always get extra extra clothing, like an extra outfit. I always get extra food, water. And you need to have your safety devices, of course. A uh, good chain. I always carry a nice chain with you with a hook in case you got to get pulled out of a situation or, or to help somebody out of a situation. You know, have a have a CB radio, have it, have it cracked on so you can hear what's going on ahead of you. Have, uh, definitely have the, uh, I think the satellite radio is good nowadays to stay awake and, um, yeah, just, just keep those extra things with you and, uh, make sure good gloves with you. And, um, yeah, that's about it really. I mean, then it's, you know, your winter stuff too, black, next blanket, um, Maybe a, little, a mini torch. I always carry tools with me. I don't think a lot of truckers carry tools nowadays. Nope. You know, I always carry a toolbox with me with a bunch of nine sixteen wrenches and hammers and sockets and stuff like that. You know, I don't even know if you're are you even allowed to work on your truck nowadays over the road. No. Uh, well, at least I, I'm not. You know, I, I guess for lease drivers and owner operators, yeah. But for us company drivers, yeah. they 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 don't want us to uh, they don't want us to work on their trucks, man. They want us to give them a call. They'll send out a uh, they'll send out mm-hmm. road service, and road service will fix their yeah. trucks. And and I'm a believer. That's ridiculous. I'm 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 kind of like wait a believer of that. You know, you're not paying me to you know you paying me to drive the truck. You're not paying me to fix it. Mm-hmm. So that's, I mean, you know, that's how, yeah. you, but if it was my truck, my I personal mean, truck, then yeah, of course I want to get out, try to tinker with it, try to fix it, 
you know, yep. try to try to know what part is which and sure. what part works and stuff like that. What do you 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 run the Northeast, man? I I'm not fucking with the Northeast. Mm -hmm. I I can't mess with the Northeast, Boston. I'm sorry. You can have all of that. <laughs> you can have all of that up there, bro. Yeah. But you. uh, but back... well, there's enough here. To, there's enough here to share. If you want to come up? Oh no, I'm good. I'm good. You can have it. But back in the day, uh, yeah, yeah. back in the day, you 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 learned in 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 the north. I mean, in the Northeast, you you was taught in the Northeast. Correct. So. How do you feel? How is driving for you up in the Northeast versus driving anywhere else? For you, it should be easy, right? Yeah, I don't. I don't sweat it. I don't sweat the traffic. It's just it'll, when I when I was running regional, I was running over the George Washington Bridge twice a day. You know, across the Cross Bronx twice a day, down Jersey Turnpike, Connecticut, every day. Yeah, I mean it's just. It's just part of the deal up here, and I run around Boston now. It's not even that bad, especially with COVID. There's no traffic. Um, it's, it's like nothing. But even when I went into other big cities like Chicago and L.A., I, like, I never got nervous. I, went New I ran New York City all the time. I never, I never really got nervous. I mean, it's just, it's just part of trucking culture, and you can't. You know, there used to be. I mean, there always truck drivers who would say, "Well, I don't, I don't, go, I don't go to the East Coast, or I don't go to New York City." Or you get a, there were companies that were paying drivers an extra hundred bucks back back then. I don't know, maybe still now to, you know, to go to Long Island. But the, I mean, I think you go wherever the freight goes. I mean, that's that's how I was. That's how I was thought it was. That's what's up, man. All right, so safety for you back in the day, man. Uh, not not too many drivers back then had to worry about. Well, not had too much worry about their safety. I mean, as far as somebody coming after them or anything like that. But being that, being OTR, have you been in a situation where you felt that, where you felt vulnerable? Sure. Yeah. I mean, always people coming up to you asking for money or, or, um, been, I've been in some, rough areas where you just you see drug deals going down and I remember one time outside of Milford, Delaware, I pulled into a uh, shopping plaza in the middle of the night to get take a nap and I woke up to my truck, people banging on my truck and screaming at me to get out of the truck and mm. and just I remember just kinda like peeking out of the curtain going, If I move, you know, something bad's gonna go down and I wish they finally went away. I was I got I got taken for the the, the five card the uh, the shell game, my, one of my first years of trucking. The show, I pulled into uh, Service Plaza in Lake Station, Indiana, and I remember I parked the truck. I was yeah, I was probably like twenty years old, and mm -hmm. this guy comes running. I'm getting out of the truck, going to the service plaza. The guy goes, hey, hey, come on, come on, come on. This old this old time was drunk, and he, he won the lottery, and mm -hmm. he's giving away all his money. And come on, mm -hmm. come on, check it out. And I, and I show up, and it's a ton of people surrounding him, and I'm watching everybody win, and. And I'm like, and, I, and then like, oh, when yeah, you come on, and come then, on, put your money in. I'm and like, then when you put your money in, is you, you you start losing. Like, yeah, I'm I'm familiar with that. Oh no, game. I started winning. I started winning. Yeah, uh, so I'm like, oh, I'm winning. I'm getting up. So I'm like, oh, go for it all. Go for it all. And then I lost. Yeah. yeah. I, oh I, yeah. I know, right? I yeah. Felt I felt so violated. Yeah. That, you know, that was stupid. crazy. I didn't man. even I didn't even know. You know. That was crazy. But you know, there's a lot of con artists on the mm -hmm. road. And that's the thing about trucking. Well, see, new people getting into trucking don't know these things. They don't know your con artists everywhere. You know, uh, you know, asking for money and hey, you know, uh, my kid's sick and I need money for medicine, or I ran out of gas down the road, or you know, it's it's a, a seedy underworld that um, it's just, it's just so weird. And there's so many documentaries and things about it now, and like on YouTube, you can find that. People just don't know about it, like modelers and uh, all you, that. That you, old deal. You, you, you know, I, I got a hell of a story, but I don't know if we think we got time. But <laughs> no, uh, you broke up. A, you, you, you broke up a little bit. But what I was about to say, uh, with so many scammers, mm -hmm. with so many schemers and scammers out here, there's there was this YouTube trucker. Her name was, uh, her name is. Trucker Nene and I, 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 I had the pleasure okay. of uh, 
of chopping it up with her, you know, and uh, had her on the show uh, a while back. But she did a video. Uh, I'm not sure if it's I'm not sure if it's up or not. But she was in Ohio and mm -hmm. she was she was taken for her 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 wedding ring. And a lot of people, you know, she she got caught up in the game. Uh, they was giving away money or whatever, whatever. And, you know, she, you know, put her wedding ring up for grabs and they they pretty much took her for a ring. Wow. And they they went, wow. in, you know, her, you know, her people. Her, you know, her subscribers and, you know, other people just went in on her like, you know, she should have known better and yada, yada, yada. But, oh, but man. um, That's I'm tough. not I'm not sure. I'm looking. No, you don't know. I'm looking on her page. I, I don't see the video anymore. I think she probably took it down. So I'm not even sure what was the so outcome. How do you spell Nene? Then uh, I'll look her up. Nene. N-A-E-N-A-E. -E -E, trucker Nene. Um, N A E N A L. Would never would have never, never would have guessed that. Yeah, in in in. I have a video on my on my A E N A E. Yeah. I got a video on my YouTube channel. If anybody wants to hear a good story about a scammer, it's called picking up strangers. And I tell I tell I tell a story. It takes me about forty minutes to tell a story. <laughs> so yeah, so we'll definitely, definitely you want, we'll definitely you want to hear the most wildest. Yeah, yeah, we'll definitely. It'll send be the wildest there. trucker story. You ever heard and uh and it's 100 it's true boston before we get up out of here man oh. and you know i do appreciate you coming sure. in and taking the time and uh taking the time and chopping it up with me man but what extra you know for the people out there what extra precautions you take to protect yourself whenever you in a, a certain situation i mean certain area now while you shutting down uh well you know i think keep to yourself don't look at any. Don't make eye contact with people. Just, just stick with your job, and don't get yourself into situations. Be aware of your surroundings. Always looking behind. Always when you're walking your truck at night, stop. Look. Look under it. Look from far away. You know, people are lurking, and uh, don't get into conversations with people. That you don't. Uh, you know, there are some people that are overly friendly. That uh, trusting and people are are waiting to uh, take advantage of that, exactly. and it's sad, it's sad, sad that I have to say that, but that's that's the reality in my in my opinion. You and know? that and that is one to grow on, Boston trucker everybody. Yeah. Again, man, thank you for coming on, uh, chopping it up with me, man. I do appreciate thank you. it. Thank uh, you. You do you have any uh do you have any other advice for these uh new jets that come out here that you know these GPS drivers and stuff like that do you have any advice any advice for them <laughs> Yeah, yeah, buy a Rand McNally map. That's what I say. Don't <laughs> don't don't uh don't depend on those GPS. It's just, just just don't get in a hurry and don't let anybody stress you out. Don't let anybody push you around. Get out and look. That's number one. You're backing your truck up. Get out and look. If you're not sure, get out and look. Don't assume your trail is where you think it needs to be. And also, don't depend on anybody else because when it comes down to it, you're responsible for your truck and you're the captain of the ship. And if somebody tells you, you're looking good, come on back, make sure you're looking good. And, uh, that's all I gotta say about that right now. Cause I gotta go fuel my truck actually. That's what's up, man. That is what's up. Well, yeah. thank you very much, Mr. Boston Trucker. You stay safe out there. Mm -hmm. And if you guys want to come on and Thank chop you. it up with me, you know what I'm saying? You can do that. You can hit me up in the Gmail, lockoutmenpodcast at gmail.com. Yo, come over and chop it up with me. I got so many people that want to, you know, just, just hang out. You know what I'm saying? And I appreciate the, one, the people that come and hang out with me, man. Top 50 most watched YouTuber. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Okay. Don't forget to go over to Instagram if you want to go over there. You can find me over there as well. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. If you guys like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share. Hit that bell and that all button for more. So when you know that I come up when I do the behind the scenes live, welcome to the 
uh, uh, to the uh, LOM community for being here. I'd like to thank Bluebird, Swerve Squad Productions, D Nitty, uh, Swamp Girl. I like to I like to say thank you for all all you guys being in here, and thank you for watching and thank you for listening. If you guys want to support your boy, you can do that by the Cash App Lockout Men Dollar Sign Lockout Men, or hook me up with some coffee, and you can do that in the uh, coffee app below. On that note, we are done. We're finished with this episode of Lockout Men Podcast. Thank you to my special guest, the Boston Trucker. And I will come back at you guys with somebody else. Stay tuned. Until then, this is Lockout Men, and I am gone.